Guys, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss the worst tractor attachments, the ones that everybody hates. This is not just my opinion. We did a survey, let you guys vote on it. You put a lot of comments down below on attachments that weren't on that list too. We're gonna compile all the results and give it to you now. Hey, and we are proud to be brought to you by Bora Wheel Spacers. If you are looking for a stability solution for your tractor, if you're feeling tippy side to side, Bora can make a big difference. They are made in America and have a lifetime warranty. Check the link out down below. Okay, so what this survey was, and I posted it on my YouTube community tab, all right? And I do a lot of surveys and uh, post some other stuff on there too. So it was titled, Necessary Evil, What Tractor Attachment Do You Hate Using, all right? And I said, while all of our tractor attachments make life easier, there are some that aren't any fun to mount to your tractor. Some are a pain to use, some are a pain to store. So make your vote on what's your least favorite or select other and then write it down below. And so before we get to those survey results, I had actually uh, marked a few of my favorite comments. I thought they were pretty funny. And so Lever Action 3030 says, there's a really simple solution to this issue. If you have or need five attachments on your property, just buy five tractors, and once each attachment is on a tractor, you never have to worry about mounting it again. Now, I think Lever Action here is onto something. You know, I have several of my own tractors. I might just take his advice and set them up that way. And along those same lines, Jeffrey Yeeter says, when you have a 1941 9N, they all suck. <laughs> but the funny part is, is that uh, Charles McKinley replies and says, but for what a new tractor costs, you can have a 9N for each attachment. That's about true. Now I did also get some really positive comments, you know, and some of these guys just love their seat time. Let's see here, one of them said, none of them are the worst. Anytime I'm using the tractor beats my day job hands down. Another gentleman said, there is nothing I hate about doing anything on my tractor. So the one thing I hate the most is getting the job done and not having a reason to play. QCAN says, none of the above. Any seat time is good time, no matter what I'm pushing, pulling, cutting, or digging. And Adam says, I love all and any attachment. It's hard to disagree with those guys. All right, so on the survey I sent out, I put four different options you could vote on for four different types of attachments, and then other, right? So if you selected other, you should leave a comment down below with what you hate. So let's start with the other category and all those write-in votes on the attachments that they hate the most. And we're gonna start with anything that has a PTO connection on it. And this could be the mid PTO, but I think primarily the rear PTO. And PTO shafts can be a pain in the butt to deal with. If you have a mower deck, a mid-mount mower where you have to reach underneath there and try to align those splines, get it to turn in a very awkward situation and then push it on the shaft, that can be a pain. But even when you have a little bit more working room on the backside in between the three-point arms, you're still bent over in an awkward situation. Oftentimes your arms stretched out, trying to wrap around different pieces of steel and get that shaft pushed onto the other splines. You have to rotate that shaft around if it's a tiller or a brush hog and oftentimes they're heavy and cumbersome to use. Now, for those of you struggling with connecting your PTO shaft, we did a whole video all about tips on how to connect your PTO shaft to try to make life easier for you. So check that video out. There's gonna be a link somewhere up here where you can watch that. Now we also partner with TractorPTOLink.com where you can buy directly from them. They make a system that makes connecting your PTO shaft a lot easier. So if you do struggle with it, I'd encourage you to check out that same video up there because we'll have more information and explanation on that. But this is what we're talking about right here. And this system, is pretty darn sweet, if you're asking me. And so, it's a two-part system. You're gonna leave one half on the attachment. You're gonna leave the other half on the PTO splines on your tractor. So you would just slide this onto the spline, or let's, let's say it's gonna go this way. Slide this onto the spline this way. This half would go into the end of your attachment. Say you have a tiller over here. This is the end of your PTO shaft. You just made it up right together like this. Pop it that way. It pops in there, you do have a a retainer pin, so you would put it in on this side, you just pop it in there. And it's connected. You can get this whole system right here from tractorptolink.com. You get 5% off with code GWT. I hope you are enjoying today's video. If you wanna see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below. We have over 450 other videos out there, so feel free to browse around. And I'm guessing if you're watching this video that you own a tractor or maybe in the market for a tractor. Well, we sell tractor attachments and we ship them all over the country. So check us out, goodworkstractors.com, see what we have for sale. One of the other reasons that you might wanna get one of those tractor PTO links is if you add on a quick hitch to the back of your tractor, it's going to lengthen the requirement of your PTO shaft to be five inches longer, okay? And so if you add on the tractor PTO link, that's gonna make up that difference and even it all out. So if you add on a quick hitch, you add on a PTO link, you're gonna even out the differences there and not have to make any alterations to your PTO shaft. 
But I do want to point out that 999 times out of 1,000, you are not gonna have to do any alterations to your PTO shaft to begin with. So I get the quick hitch, and then if you need to add on length to your PTO shaft, get a tractor PTO link. Now, next up on the list were front end loaders, and I can see those being a pain to take on and off. However, a lot of the John Deere systems are a real piece of cake. The newer Kubota BX system is pretty darn easy as well. There are a lot of the more traditional style of loaders out there that you have to remove some parking stands, lower those down, pull a couple pins, that kind of thing, which are a little bit more of a pain. Always easier to take off than to put back on your tractor, so I can see that being problematic. For some of these modern subcompacts though, I think they're a piece of cake and not that difficult. Front mounted blowers or anything that mounts on a front quick hitch was a pretty popular answer as well. And I can totally agree with that. Not that they're not great attachments, right? Once they're on there, they're very easy to use. They're very effective to use. However, to mount, let's just take a John Deere front mounted snowblower, for example, you gotta take the loader off. You have to put um, some brackets on your tractor if they're not on there already. You have to put a PTO shaft on. If you have auto connect um, mower hardware underneath, you have to take that off. You have to put a bracket on, a quick hitch on, and then the blower, get it all hooked up, hook up your hydraulics. You can see where I'm going with this. There's a lot involved just to explain it. So no doubt is a pain to hook up. And if you have to transition between a loader and a blower multiple times throughout the course of the winter, it becomes that much more frustrating of a task to deal with. So totally justified being on this list. And for me, this is why I really don't like the front mount of blowers. Not that they're not extremely effective, but if I can mount a blower on my three point hitch, put a snow pusher or a snow plow on my loader, that way I can use my loader all winter long. I can still switch out quickly from the bucket to the forks to the snow pusher or snow plow, that kind of thing, have a snow blower on the back. For me, it's a better setup. And if you get one of those pull type snow blowers where you can drive forward over the snow instead of having to turn around and crane your neck, well, that's a win-win, we sell those too. Next up, this one only had one vote, but I thought it was worth putting on here because I can totally agree, and that's gonna be baggers. And in particular, gonna be the, the three bin baggers or a two bin bagger that's on the back. Some of the clamshells or the dump from the seat are gonna have their own stand with uh, wheels on there or casters on there to, to move it around and make it a lot easier to take off of your three-point hitch. We sell those from Protero, but the traditional John Deere baggers that are out there and some of the Kubota baggers, and I'm sure there's others out there, don't have any kind of a stand. Uh, some of them don't mount to the three-point hitch. You have to take the three-point hitch arms off, mount it to a different bracket that goes on the back of your tractor. They're very awkward and cumbersome and top-heavy, so trying to get them to all align, it's like a two-person job to get it done. So that was a really good one to put on this list. They are great to use, very effective, make life a lot easier for those spring and fall cleanups or collecting the leaf clippings. But yeah, there's no doubt they are one of the most hated attachments. This last one pains me to see on this list and I think it's because there's a lack of education out there. Guess what? I'm gonna have to make another video all about it. We're talking about the quick hitch and there's a lot of folks out there that struggle with a quick hitch, getting it to work with their attachments. And I think that's just more of a lack of understanding or a lack of knowledge about a quick hitch, what it does, what's required to make it work. And so the short list for that is that a quick hitch and then quick hitch compatible attachments are built to the same specification, all right? There's an ASAE specification out there that determines the width between lower links, the, the width from the bottom, I'm sorry, the height from the bottom to the top link. Um, there's just those certain parameters with some tolerances that you have to fit within for both the quick hitch and for the attachment to be compatible. You can only use category one quick hitches with category one attachments. Even though you need category two or category three bushings to put on a lot of them, that gets very confusing. But a category two quick hitch and three point attachment is a lot wider, okay? So a category two is not gonna fit and just magically narrow up to fit in a category one. The other big caveat is gonna be that top link, that top hook should be adjustable, all right? And one of the big pains that I have found with those is that those top hooks are bolted on. However, over at Bolt-On Hooks, we featured this uh, briefly in a video a while back, they make a, I'm gonna call it a quick release pin where you can put it right through with a little retainer and pop those out so you can quickly adjust that top hook up and down. But it doesn't matter the brand, if it's a Frontier, a Land Pride, um, a Dirt Dog, uh, HLA, you name it, if it's quick hitch compatible, it will work, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to do some work on your end. You could still have to lengthen um, or shorten a top link to get that hook to line up correctly. It's the same thing if you're hooking up directly to a three-point attachment. It's not gonna take every ounce of pain out of the process, but it should eliminate 90% or more of that frustration and make it that much easier. So as long as you have attachments that are quick hitch compatible, it is really hard to beat that system. I've used them for years and I absolutely love them. 
So backhoe is next on the list, and this is one that can be very frustrating for a lot of folks. I do think some of the smaller backhoes on the subcompacts are easier to tackle and handle than the larger units, but there's no doubt that they're a big, cumbersome unit, and you have to get everything just right, both aligned to fit down in the pins, to get the pins put through, uh, to release everything, to hook it up. It's it's a challenge in and of itself, and so you guys are not alone there. I totally understand that. It is not something I look forward to, even on the 1025R, which is one of the easiest systems that's out there. I know on the smaller backhoes, like the 1025R, you have to remove the three-point arms as well. You know, I did mention in a recent video, I want to point it out here again, if you're shopping for a tractor and it has a backhoe on it already, I would ask the question, does this include the three-point arms? Because oftentimes, Maybe those three-point arms got lost or they're not going to be included. They're going to be forgotten and they're very expensive to replace. So I just bring that up just to save you some money down the road. If you want to see a good video on how to attach and disconnect a 1025R backhoe, we did one last spring and thought it was pretty good. You can see how quick we can do it. I think it took what, Chris? Maybe like five minutes to... Took me eight minutes took you eight minutes okay and it took and that was his first time doing it so eight minutes for a complete beginner to do it so if you get the hang of it do it a handful of times you're gonna get down to five or six minutes it's not that bad mower decks were next on the list and this is one of those that's kind of a a pain in the butt to do and you see a lot of mower deck damage because they are such a pain to take off you know if you want to use your your front end loader to do some work around the house or the the, the farm or the ranch whatever it is you just don't want to remove that mower deck. It's a pain. Now the auto connect decks from John Deere do make that process quite a bit easier. It still does take you a handful of minutes to take it on and off. However, if you have a deck from Kubota, Mahindra, Massey, whoever else it is, they are going to be a little bit more involved and it's always quicker to remove a deck than it is to put it back on, but it can become a bit of a chore or you think it's just not worth the effort or the time to do it and you end up with more deck damage. So it's one of those cumbersome items. Sometimes you have to turn the gauge wheels, disconnect the PTO shaft underneath there, disconnect the, the lift mechanism as well, and then slide it up from the side, push it back in. You got to get everything set up just right and yada, yada, yada. That's a horrible, horrible process. How are you feeling? Terrible. I feel terrible. Thank you for asking. Aha! Oh! So I can see why they're on the list. And so because of this and the fact that they're not just giving away these mower decks, it may be worth looking into getting a separate, maybe zero turn or small ride on mower to handle your mowing duties and keep the tractor work separate. So this one happens to be my number one most hated attachment, although it's number two on our list, which is the post hole digger. And so when I put the survey out, I said it could be your most hated attachment for a variety of reasons, whether that's to attach to the tractor, to use or to store. And the post hole digger hits all three of those topics there. I can't stand it for all those reasons. And so while this is definitely a necessary evil, it sure beats doing it by hand. However, it's a two person job to get it attached to your tractor and to take it back off. There's no down pressure for most of these post hole diggers either. So you're using gravity and just the auger itself to pull it down into the ground. And if you get it stuck, it can be very challenging to, to get it back out. There's no hydraulics to reverse that rotation and get it out. And then to store it, some of them do have stands and they can work okay, but a lot of them don't have any kind of a stand. And you see many homemade stands out there to try to alleviate this process and make the whole connection and storage issues a lot simpler. But for all these reasons, it's why it made number two on our list. All right, now far and away, number one on our list was anything that is not quick attach, all right? And I left this intentionally vague because quick attach means different things to different people. Now, one of the big ones for me is gonna be on a front end loader and not getting a pinned on bucket. Doing so is going to make it very difficult to quickly go from attachment to attachment. So if you have a quick attach bucket, a John Deere quick attach, a skid steer quick attach, a global quick attach, you can take your bucket off, put a set of pallet forks on, a grapple, a bale spear, a snow pusher, a snow plow, the list goes on. There's all sorts of uses for it with that quick attach. However, I think one of the other common uses is gonna be on the three point hitch with the quick hitch that we talked about earlier. So there's gonna be a bit of a love hate relationship there. Maybe these are the folks that have kind of figured it out or have everything set up properly already and understand how it's supposed to work. But using a quick hitch is going to simplify life, the connection process, the disconnection process, make it much quicker as well, sweat free, pain-free, cuss-free, 
It's a very simple system once you figure it out. The quick hitch is the number one attachment that we sell and the version that we sell is the Spico E-Hitch. It does come in a reddish orange color and it's one of the only ones out there that does not use bushings for every attachment. So traditionally for reasons unknown, I, I don't know the answer, but most other quick hitches from Land Pride and Frontier and uh, Harbor Freight and, and wherever else require you to put a set of bushings on each attachment that you have and it upsizes the pin size to a category three typically, sometimes a category two. The difference with the Spico that we sell is it doesn't use those bushings. It's a direct fit to a category one pin, so you don't have to do anything else to modify your equipment. You just slap this on the back of your three point hitch, connect your attachments, as long as they're quick hitch compatible, and away you go. And so the third concept that I put under this quick attach envelope is gonna be your loaders, your mowers, and your backhoes. And so while they still did find their way onto the worst attachments list is because they're a pain overall and the manufacturers are trying to make that process easier. So if you have a good quick attach system and I'm giving John Deere some props here because I think they do. I think their loader system, their mower system and their backhoe are all very easy as far as quick attach goes. Well, it's gonna simplify that process, take the pain out, and make getting your work done more enjoyable. Well, I'm curious to know what you think. If you have a different list, if you have a most hated attachment that we didn't talk about at all, or if you happen to agree, we'd love to know about it. Leave a comment down below. And again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I'd encourage you to do so. We'd love to have you follow along. Got a great community of folks here, always commenting with great stuff. We learn something new every day. And if you are in the market for a tractor attachment, we'd love to have an opportunity. Check us out at goodworkstractors.com. Don't forget, we sell and ship all over the country. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.